What do you have to say, Caspian? Well, we're going on a hiking trail, and I think it will be really fun. I'm excited to see all the birds, and we'll bring you with us. This is our favorite campground so far in Costa Rica. It's called Lagos del Rio. It's just outside of the town of La Fortuna. You can hear howler monkeys in the morning. There are sloths in the trees, although we didn't see any. It's gonna be hard to leave this area, but we are headed to Monte Verde, which is supposed to be one of the most beautiful places in all of Costa Rica. We'll see how this goes today. We may return here, who knows? We've been checking the weather reports and we think that we might be able to beat the rain to the campground where we plan to go. We don't know. Brittany wants coffee. We'll see how all this goes. Here we go. We've really enjoyed this town, but it's time to go. And that that we just drove through was the main street. Now normally that place is packed, but right now it's way too early in the morning here in Latin America. It's only eight o'clock in the morning and nothing here opens till around 11. Right in front of us is Volcan de Arenal, the big volcano that towers over the town of La Fortuna as well as Lake Arenal, which is right beside us. We can't see it from here. And usually you can't see the cone at the top, but every once in a while the clouds clear and it is the coolest view to see the whole volcano. We got to see it a couple days ago. We are going to be driving around Lake Arenal. This will be our third time going around the lake. In the region that we're driving through now, on either side of us are thermal waters from the volcano. And so there's a lot of these little places where you'll see termales, which means that you can pay a fee, go in there and enjoy some of the hot thermal pools. We went to one the other day, had a really great time at one called Los Loreles. So we are going over the dam that creates Lake Arenal. It was constructed in 1979, and it's here on the far eastern side of Lake Arenal. The drive around Lake Arenal is full of twists and turns through lush jungle as you skirt the northern end of the lake. There isn't really a major road that goes along the southern end. Sometimes the shrubs aren't cut back as much as you'd like around these twisty turns. So you can imagine if we're having to pass a big truck, it gets pretty tight. Even on this road, my driver's side tires are over the line on parts of that uh, where you have blind corners. We are pulling up to Cafe and Macadamia. We're gonna see if all these tourist buses go there. But it's a pretty well-known restaurant. We've eaten there before. Brittany really enjoyed her meal. It's got beautiful views and Brittany still wants her coffee. <laughs> I haven't had coffee yet, it's 9.30. Brittany's unbuckling very quickly so she can beat this one bus. <laughs> and the other, there's already another tour bus here. I know, but they've probably been here a while. I just want a coffee. Yay! Success! Brittany got her coffee. I did. I got my coffee. I may have snuck a treat for myself. Nine minute and 59 second stop. And That's how I do. And we are back on the road. There's quite a few of these one lane bridges along this route and everybody just kind of takes their turn. There is a yield sign typically on one side of the bridge, but not everybody listens to the yield sign. We have gotten off the pavement and we've been up some cobblestones, but we have had some beautiful views up here, you guys. And we'll share some of those with you here. Look at this view. Sometimes when we see things like this, it doesn't even seem real. I have to remind myself we're really here. There's a little kawadi. There he goes. There's these two little kids on a horse right here, baby. We finally met up with the main road, which hasn't been great, but it's fine for even cars like the one in front of us. And uh, check out the campground when we get there. This is where we're hoping to camp tonight. Your destination tonight. is on the left. Okay, Turin. 
It is closed. Which we knew. Which we knew. We will wait to see if it opens. We have arrived at Turin, which is going to be our campground here. And it is a beautiful location. There's a restaurant on site, bathrooms. We're getting ready to set up Dauntless. And uh, tomorrow we'll explore this area. spots for the night and this is the one we chose it's a nice little parallel spot next to the river Brittany has set up her kitchen and done a little vacuuming we've been setting up the tent here's Brittany's vacuum a necessity of full-time travel we just set up our little rain fly on the alley cab and behind us is a little fire pit far enough away from the camp where I've got our chair set up. So here we are, we're only about half an hour from Monte Verde where we're camped tonight. Monte Verde is something that I've heard about for so many years. It definitely seems to be what everybody wants to see when they come to Costa Rica. They say, oh, it's the cloud forest. It's one of the most biodiverse places on earth to see plants and animals. And it always seems super enchanting to me. So when I knew that we were getting closer to Costa Rica, I wanted to come here too. There are a lot of things that we hear about that everybody does when they go to certain countries. And that doesn't mean we do them. We can't do all the touristy things. It's super exhausting and it can be really expensive too. So we have to kind of pick and choose what we want to do. But this is one of those things that seem to be a really good fit for us as a family because we love hiking. Caspian loves the Junior Ranger programs back in the United States and we like to learn about the nature around us. So I'm really excited. It's 6.15 in the morning. We woke up this morning at 5.30 because we've got to pack up Dauntless completely and drive a half an hour to get to the bioreserve where we're going today. We're going to take you with us. This is all part of the cloud course, you guys. We really hope you enjoy this. All right, we are 24 minutes away from Curicancha. Curicancha is the name of the reserve that we picked to go to today. We have a guy that we're supposed to meet up with named Tony. I didn't even tell you, Brittany, last night I got a message that Tony said somebody ke named Kenneth might be the guy taking this. Okay. So we'll see how this goes. We stopped at the bank to get some cash for our guide. This is probably, I think this is the most expensive tour we've taken on this trip. It's 150 US dollars for the three of us for two hours with a guide. It was $60 for me, 60 for Brittany, and 30 for Caspian. And from everything we hear, it's supposed to be worth it, so we'll see. But now we're headed up to the reserve, where hopefully we'll meet our guide and uh, start this journey. It says no touching the animals. We have made it to Cootie Country Reserve. We are excited to show this to you and uh, for you to experience this along with us. This is exciting because we've done a lot of hiking and time out in nature, but we haven't paid to have a guide. And we've thought about it a lot and whether maybe that was the wrong choice because we were missing out on a lot. Anyway, this is going to be great. What do you have to say, Caspian? Well, we're going on a hiking trail and I think it will be really fun. I'm excited to see all the birds and we'll bring you with us. All around the base here, you can find guides. And this is our guide, Kenneth. He is going to be taking us through the Curicancha Reserve. That's awesome. Hey, and what's that? Is that squirrel? 
What? We haven't even what? left a parking lot, what? you guys. If that tells you anything, this is going to be awesome. All right, here we go. Those are what the trees totally hollow inside. There's a tunnel all the way up. That's amazing. Is it hollow all the it's way up? Yeah. Tree. It kills another tree. How does it kill another tree? Sending a lot of roots around the first tree. But that process takes hundreds of years. Did you kill another tree? Yeah. See, you can see Caspian, it looks like the same type of flesh. But it's not edible, just just for birds. Right? In the cloud forest, the 30% of trees are avocado trees. Mm. Wow. Is this yeah. a cloud forest? This is part of the cloud forest. Can I hold it? Yeah. Hey, look, this is another type of avocado. Wow. That's a little avocado. Is it edible? Just for birds. Uh, all yeah. of the uh, all of the avocados here only edible to birds and some mammals like monkeys. Mm -hmm. Nocturnal mammals. Are uh, any of fruit? them edible to humans? No. Well, the one we eat. I love Caspian's curiosity. He asks so many questions, you guys, and he learns it because he's genuinely interested in it. Hey, can I hold your hand? Sure. Does it feel safe? Nice. I just like holding people's hands. When oh, I can. really? Oh, I think it's okay. That's fine. Which trail are we going on? There's hundreds I can see. The guides help each other out. Once one guide finds a creature in the forest, they point it out to each other, and then everybody else hones in on it. It's actually really cool the way they work together, and everybody's been super friendly. We keep seeing toucans fly through the trees, and I was just telling Eric that growing up and eating Fruit Loops, I always <laughs> felt like toucans were these super exotic, otherworldly birds. And even though I've seen them in captivity so many times, it's not the same as seeing them in the wild. It's so cool. And unfortunately, we can't capture them. They fly so fast through these trees that even if I were to catch it on video i don't think you guys would see it but hopefully we'll catch something that you guys can see on this video so that you guys is a juvenile quetzal that can have found and he's actually using my phone to look through his telescope but that is what we're getting to see up close one of the benefits to having a guide is that he recognizes all the sounds. Listen. You hear that sound that sounds like a, like a frog? Those are actually toucans. These vines are called ox eye. And they grow here, but you don't touch them. They have thorns and they have this substance that when you touch them, it will irritate your skin. That is the bellbird, you guys. Keep in mind, this is footage taken through a telescope. This is a male, full-grown male. Females are olive green with dark green stripes. Here's our guide, Kenneth. And here's his telescope. And to give you an idea, we were looking at that bird way up there across the field. When it comes about birding, right, open areas also are the best. Because when you are inside of the forest, uh, it's pretty dark and it's very dense, especially here in the cloud forest, where the trees and the vegetation is pretty dense. Mm -hmm. So that's why we prefer to be here in the open areas. You can see the hummingbirds uh, pollinating the flowers. And you have more uh, view, right, to see when a bird uh, flies away. Looks like our little birdie needs a snack, huh? Are you a birdie, Caspian? Oh. What are you today? I'm a cat. Oh, cat. Would you like some raisins? Yeah. That's fine, thank you. Oh, watch me, Yeah. Our guide was sharing with us that these are called micro orchids. The precipitation here is more in form of mist than rain. So that's why it's not a rainforest, it's a cloud forest. Oh, 
This is really special time, baby. I don't know who's helping who. Whether you're helping me or I'm helping you. I feel like we're helping you. What is that, baby? Let me see it. Put it in your hand so I can see it. What is that? It's a flying saucer flower. A flying saucer flower? Is that the real name of it? No, I just made it up. Oh, all right. <laughs> Doesn't it kind of look like a flower but a flying saucer too? Well, actually, it looks like a flower, but it's not. Because it was it was a fruit. It was, it was closed. See? And it was like that. And then the fruit opens up to disperse the seeds. Yeah, I think. Well, the seeds are not here anymore. I love it here in the forest. I love being away from other people. We love people, but we also love time away in nature. I think everybody does. We've seen some really cool birds. We finally mm -hmm. saw the Quetzal, which we got acquainted with in Guatemala, where the money is named after the Quetzal, but we never saw a Quetzal in Guatemala. So we finally saw one here. That was really cool. And it's cool getting to know their sounds because we hear them in camp all the time, but we haven't known what they were. So that's one of my favorite things is now when I hear I'm gonna know oh that's yeah. the bellbird or that's a toucan which I thought was a frog so. <laughs> it is uh, very fresh here if you take a deep breath here and just take it in it's so crisp and clean and um, our guide was explaining that we are at the continental divide there's wind coming from yeah. the Atlantic and the Pacific and they merge here and the clouds go right through the forest and so the biodiversity here is enormous. Mm -hmm. uh, did he say it was more than the rainforest? He did, yeah. He said technically this could be considered a kind of rainforest, but specifically it's the cloud forest. And he said that it's more biodiverse because it's a cloud forest and it's a mist rather than a rain. Well, it is amazing here. And we are, um, so there's a new forest and an old forest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, a lot of the trees here were caught down in the 50s. And so that's considered a secondary forest here specifically. Um, but we are now in the virgin forest of this reserve where the trees have never been cut down. Here at Cudicancha Reserve, it is quite a significant and expansive trail system. You could spend a lot of time here in the cloud forest. If you'd like to visit, you can get details here at cudicancha.com. We would have totally missed it without Kenneth. But it's so cool to see him now, you guys. Look at that. Just live his happy little life. Oh, that's a car seat, eh? Mm -hmm. There's a monkey. Where's the Quetzal? Where, where's the male animal? Well, this is a female Quetzal. Go straight up. So females, as I told you before, doesn't have the, the long feathers. And they have black beak. She is also beautiful. Here we have a juvenile male quetzal. You see it's pretty different comp comparing the female. Look at the yellow beak. The red breast. If I got tired, I would have really liked it. Yeah, I, I'm so tired. Everybody gets tired. <laughs> Are you tired? A little bit. So this is fun. I've just been told you can actually go inside this ficus tree. Come on, go. Oh. Caspian, are you inside a ficus tree? Yeah. What the what? What does it look like up there? Up there. Really tall? And there's a vine. That vine is stretching all the way up there. Look, Daddy. So you see this vine? Uh-huh. Look up. All right, we will look up. Oh, my. Oh, look at that, Caspian. It does stretch all the way up. All the way to the top. It's hollow. It's all the, all the way to the top. It's hollow all the way to the branches. It's like a ship, but in a tree. Like what kind of ship? Like 
like some kind of ship in like Star Wars or in stories. All right, Kenneth, we just want to say thank you so um, much for taking us on this tour and sharing your knowledge and your expertise. Yeah, it's always a pleasure to take people uh, that enjoy a lot, you know, like you guys did. Thank you so yeah. much. You guys, thank you so much for joining us. We hope you've enjoyed this journey through the cloud forest here in Monte Verde at Curi Cancha. In Costa Rica. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe and hit that bell icon for notifications. We would also love to have you join us on Patreon. I'm sure Eric will be doing a big post there today, way before this video ever goes up. Oh, definitely. To share some behind the scenes stuff and our thoughts that don't go up on social media. Yeah, I've been sharing on Patreon all day today via our ShareCast, which is a Marco Polo. It's a, it's like a live video of our time here. So our Patreon subscribers at certain tiers have already seen all of this before the YouTube video ever goes live. So you guys check out our Patreon and we will see you in the next video.